Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at the Hungry Huskies. This is what happens when you ban us last year, two years. Shabazz Bouze Napier, born July 14, 1991. When Kemba Walker went on that unbelievable run to end his senior season and Hall of Honor career at UConn, winning five games in five days in the Big East tournament as the ninth seed coming in, claiming the title before performing even more magic in the NCAA tournament, winning six games in a row, capturing his first and only national championship, there was a freshman backup point guard named Shabazz Napier low-key catching the eyes of many. I know for sure I was slowly becoming glued to his process with high hopes because I saw huge potential in his game. When you talk about East Coast point guards and what expectations are for me, a guy like Kemba Walker was the exact representation of what I think their game should look and feel like. Tough, hungry, attitude, fearlessness, flash and personality. Kemba leaving UConn for me was the poster child. So imagine to my glee when I first got to see Napier play as a freshman in the shadows of one of college basketball's greatest stories unfolding right before his eyes. Never could there be a second coming of Walker and never could their story play out almost identically impressive by the time Napier was ready to walk out the door after four years at UConn. He led his team to the conference championship game like Walker, except they lost before heading into the NCAA tournament as the seven seed, winning six games like Walker in the same Cinderella fashion to take home the NCAA tournament championship, his second ring in four years. He was no question the best point guard in college that year and it wasn't even close. Napier had everyone glued to his games and overall career, even LeBron James singing high praises for Napier on Twitter and urging any team that needed a point guard to grab him in the upcoming draft as their first choice. With the success of Kemba Walker transitioning well into the NBA even at the smaller stature of 6'1", the exact size as Napier, Walker went on to be the face of a franchise, four-time All-Star, and sign huge NBA contracts. Shabazz was supposed to be the second coming of that, seeing as by then, their careers were playing out eerily similar. But Napier didn't transition as well as Walker to the NBA for these growth stunts. He was a journeyman since the first day he stepped into the NBA, traded from the Charlotte Hornets to Miami on draft night, traded after one season in Miami to Orlando, then two in Portland, year in Brooklyn, and a 56-game season split between Minnesota and Washington, playing for five teams in five seasons, lasting just six years in the league, before it was clear he wouldn't get the footing he wanted in the NBA. What happened to Shabazz Napier? Let's talk about it. It's your boy JC Stunned Growth. Let's get it. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Shabazz Napier was a 6'1 point guard from Roxbury, Massachusetts that flew under the radar in high school for most outside his local area. He began at Charlestown High, then transferred to Lawrence Academy where he had an undefeated season to finish his career, winning a Class C title. Napier wasn't ranked high leaving school, in fact he was the 98th ranked player in the nation, 24 point guards ahead of him. Still, Jim Calhoun and Kevin Ali saw enough in him to make him their next featured guard, perfectly timed to be able to learn from Walker for a year, then assume the reins as UConn's next star point guard. His Husky career was stellar to say the least. He improved his scoring every year as well as free throw and three point shooting, which is impressive. He shot 40% from three as a senior shooting over five a game. Despite LeBron's advice, there were four point guards taken in front of him in the draft, landing 24th overall, heading into his immediately unsettling NBA journey. Stunt number one, expectations too high. In the most recent feature of Rudy Fernandez, he dealt with the same before injury eventually took his career. Expectations too high after his Olympic performance dunk on Dwight Howard, as Shabazz being overly praised by LeBron James, who everyone had their eyes on waiting to see which team he'd join next. 
It's the biggest difference between when Kemba Walker was drafted and when his second coming supposedly Shabazz Napier was. Walker was a top 10 pick, drafted to a Charlotte team with all intents of making him their franchise point guard. More importantly, they had the room for Walker to grow through the initial growing pains. Napier came to a Miami Heat team who LeBron just left in free agency to run back to Cleveland without their leader and a team built around giving him the best chance of winning, not necessarily caring about the opportunity of others. Therefore, Miami was stacked with all the mid-point guards you could find to give LeBron consistency from that position, all bringing something to the table James could always use. Miami moved up on draft night to get Shabazz, all to make LeBron happy, seeing the love he was showing months earlier. Only LeBron ghosted them that summer, and the Heat were stuck with another point guard to compete with Goran Dragic, his brother, Mario Chalmers, Norris Cole, and not to mention D. Wade, basically a point guard, in how much he has the ball and being the in-house franchise player. For being on a team without the room to grow but expectations to at least be the playmaker people said you were when comparing you to Walker, or at least the shooter you were at UConn, improving every season and finishing at 40% for your senior year, Napier couldn't put it all together in the space given on his first team and was traded after just one season. Stunt number 2, Blue and Important Opportunity after being traded to the Orlando Magic, Napier was caught in another situation not so ideal as far as room for him to grow with so many point guards once again on the roster. Basically the same situation. Alfred Payton, their young lottery pick in the same draft as Napier, but 10th overall. CJ Watson, Brandon Jennings, rookie Keith Appling, and a D-Wade semi-clone in Victor Oladipo circumstances looking the same, the team didn't expect much from Napier, seeing as they only gave up a conditional second round pick for him. He wasn't expected to do much, especially after the rookie year he had and many already giving up on his potential. But during his first season with the Magic, they would deal with injury to their point guard position, CJ playing just 33 games, Jennings 25, Appling 5, even Alfred Payton, who played 73 games, missed enough time that the Magic actually needed Napier to play an important backup role. In 55 games, he didn't show the ability to create for himself or others consistently as expected. At UConn, he wasn't exactly the assist man, but you expected it without great players on his team. But an Orlando team in the NBA, he could have averaged more than 1.8 assists a game. Then again, he only played about 10 minutes a game. His shooting was also not as advertised, shooting low 30s from 3 and 73% from the free throw line, making him practically useless seeing as he was a 6 foot 1 liability when he's more like 5'10", 5'11". When Alfred Payton went out in January of the 15-16 season with injury, Orlando decided against using Napier at point, opting for Mario Herzonia at backup instead. Not consistently showing he would soon live up to expectations, Orlando traded him to the Portland Trailblazers to play in another backup role, which would be his last, but this Orlando opportunity was a huge blow. Stunt number three, being seen more as a liability. It's hard to tell in college because it's not abnormal to see a point guard average four or five assists a game, then go on to become a top tier assist guy in the league. So in no way was Napier's 4.8 assists average for his career at UConn not good enough. But getting to the league, Shabazz wasn't as advertised in this area either. Unlike Kemba, I think his size did matter for his game as he was usually pushed out of position on offense and abused on pick and rolls trying to stay in front of his man. He had his moments where he shot well, but consistency was an issue and led to him being traded from Orlando after one year to the Blazers where he spent two years for the first time in his career. Not until his sixth year did he show good natural point guard instincts or maybe he finally had the space to learn how to turn it on. 
With Minnesota, he averaged a career-high 5 assists but naturally and consistently able to be a productive point guard in the NBA, Shabazz didn't get the chance to show that. He showed he was more a liability, not the creator and shooter teams thought he was and it caused him to move around often before it was over and Napier was headed overseas where he is at the moment. All in all, I still love Napier's game and was hoping to do a growth spurt somehow with this video, but quickly noticed his time in the NBA was anything but that. Still from 98th overall in high school, a tremendous college career winning two national championships to first round pick and six years in the NBA, not so bad. But for these reasons, his growth was stunning. Chip boy JC stunning growth, and I'm out.